gold continues to be one of the most sought-after precious metals. It is one of the most valuable, a symbol of wealth and power. To obtain it, miners must process tons of rock. But have you ever wondered how gold is made? We visited the largest gold deposit in the United States and the world's largest underground gold vault to discover how gold is extracted from mines and stored in one of the most secure places on the planet. Billions of years ago, a meteorite shower fell on the planet, bringing gold with it. Everything they brought remained buried until the miners arrived and the fever for this shiny golden metal began. The gold rushers in California didn't care where the gold came from. They pursued the American dream, and gold could make them millionaires. What they didn't know was that beneath their feet lay a sea of gold much larger than they could ever have dreamed of. The overheated gold and silica was forced to rise from the depths of the earth and crystallized in quartz veins to meet the demand for gold. More precious metal is extracted than one could imagine. Gold cannot be extracted or processed until it is found. The first step is to find out where the gold is. Currently, most gold is found in rocks in the form of microscopic particles invisible to the naked eye. The largest gold deposit in the United States is located in northeastern Nevada. The tool needed to find rocks containing gold has been replaced by a gigantic electromagnetic system. A huge metal detector soaring through the sky sends a signal capable of detecting magnetized sand and all related components hundreds of meters underground. Often, gold is found in this sand. Aerial exploration is an expensive method, but it can narrow down the search. Finding a very large mine is not easy, so the economic risk is high. Out of every thousand explorations, less than one yields results. When they locate a vein, the drillers start their work. These machines can drill up to 2 kilometers deep. The gold mine in northeastern Nevada is the second largest gold mine in the United States. It consists of two mines, one underground and one open pit, over 80 meters wide and 450 meters deep. Each day, 600,000 tons of limestone containing gold are flown. When they blast, they first drill the rock and then insert the explosive made of ammonium nitrate combined with fuel. Every month, they use between 700 and 900 tons of ammonium nitrate. 600,000 tons of pulverized rock. Each ton of ore may contain as little as 3 grams of gold. A tremendous amount of rock is needed to produce a gold ingot. Millions of tons of rock for a single ingot billions of dollars are required to extract this mineral. Nowadays, gold is valued at around $63 per gram, and miners spare no expense. This shovel is the largest in the world, with a price tag of over $20 million. It is also the most expensive. Haul trucks can carry up to 270 tons of ore, and the shovel loads one ton in three scoops. The trucks unload the ore. The conveyor belt deposits the ore into a giant rotating drum. Inside, massive steel balls grind it into powder. The rock is crushed into sand and mixed with water to form a kind of sludge. It is then sent to huge tanks for the next phase. Cyanide is added in small amounts to form a highly diluted solution. Cyanide is one of the few chemicals that dissolve gold. Then small fragments of carbon are added which trap the gold from the solution and separate it from impurities. Next, the gold solution undergoes electrolysis. An electric current causes the gold to deposit on the negative electrode or cathode. In the Nevada mine, there are tons of gold that cannot be extracted through open pit mining. So they go underground. A much more expensive and dangerous endeavor. Half a kilometer to reach a dark and strange world formed by a network of 80 kilometer tunnels. The average temperature down here is 60 degrees. The same technique used in open pit mining is used to extract gold underground. First, blasting, then shovels collect the ore and sift the rock that falls until the truck is full. The truck takes the ore to the surface where it will be processed. The gold is covered by a thick crust of sulfide. The ore and water are heated to 224 degrees in a giant chamber. 
pure oxygen is added, and after subjecting it to immense pressure, the crust breaks, releasing the gold. The gold extracted from both open pit and underground mines ends up in the dumping room. The next step is smelting. It is heated to about 1,100 degrees Celsius with 90% pure gold. Each ingot weighs 25 kilograms, but to obtain it, miners must process up to 8,200 tons of rock. Each ingot is the size of a brick and is worth over $1 million. Now the gold heads to a refinery where all impurities will be removed. The gold undergoes the final phase of cleaning and polishing. The last step is marking the ingots with the percentage of purity. Over 190,000 tons of gold have been extracted throughout history, and a large portion of that gold ends up in the hands of the Federal Reserve. For over 80 years, armored vehicles have traveled the narrow streets of Manhattan, transporting millions in gold deposits to and from the only Federal Reserve Bank trusted enough to safeguard nearly one quarter of the world's gold supply. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York's Gold Vault is located in the basement of its main office building in Manhattan, built in the early 1920s. The vault provides account holders a secure place to store their monetary gold reserves. Much of the gold in the vault arrived after World War II as many countries wanted to store their gold reserves in a safe place. Gold holdings in the vault continued to increase and reached their peak in 1973, shortly after the United States suspended the convertibility of dollars into gold for foreign governments. At its peak, the vault held over 12,000 tons of gold. Since then, the activity of gold deposits and withdrawals has slowed down, and the vault has experienced a gradual but steady decline in overall holdings. However, the vault remains the largest monetary gold depository in the world today. The gold travels in heavily guarded armored vans. Then, the vans are unloaded. This small pile of gold bars may not seem like much, but if you try to put it in the back of your car, you would burst the tires. Now the bars are taken to the world's largest underground gold vault. It is valued at over $380 billion. But what would you do with so much gold?